Zeb, my, my question to you is in terms of the modern trends that are evolving uh, with regard to providing solutions for false positives like uh, data integrity solutions and AI, can you, can you shed some light on that, please, so that at least we can learn uh, from what your experience has been? Sure. Uh, so first of all, thank, I just want to extend thank, uh, my thanks to the State Bank and to Delson for the invitation uh, to come here and speak. Um, so thinking uh, a good part of my job is uh, I get to travel uh, a number of places around the world, speaking to customers, speaking to different regulators. Uh, so we get a sense of uh, generally what are the trends happening uh, when it comes to transaction screening, customer onboarding. And um, what we've come to the conclusion in where the world is today and where it's moving, the trends we're seeing is, uh, you know, we, we've narrowed it down to what we call the free E's. So the solutions that you have have to be effective, they have to be efficient, and they need to show explainability. So the last one is kind of a made up word. You won't find it in the English dictionary. So I'll come back to explaining that and it leads on to artificial intelligence. So being effective is our primary job for our customers is to protect them. Stop you from processing an illegal transaction. Stop you from onboarding a party that you shouldn't. So our solution number one has to be effective. And for that, we have to do continuous investments in development, keep refining our solutions. Um, they have to be efficient, and that's where it comes to false positive reduction. Um, this is our customers' major, biggest challenge. Um, we, again, develop, in lo develop lots of solutions, core solutions. Um, you can write rules, you can, we have algorithms where uh, you, have, you, you can enhance your data. Um, but the one thing I would say to all of the customers who have a solution where you have uh, a large number of false positives, are, are you effectively using those solutions? Um, every co compliance screening solution, whether it's transaction screening or customer onboarding, should not be used out of the box. It should not be implemented, configured on day one and then left. It's an evolving system. Uh, we use the term tuning. Uh, if you have a guitar, you'll see somebody who sits there and changes a knob, makes a bit of sound, they tune it until the music sounds right. The same thing happens with your uh, screening engine. You have to continuously change it because your requirements, your risk appetites, the regulator's pressure on you is different from a European bank, is different from an African bank. So to reduce false positives there, uh, you need to concentrate uh, on that. The last thing is the, the trend we're seeing globally, which is explainability. So traditionally, our customers would be audited a little bit. Now they're being audited more often and they're being asked to give a lot more detail. So um, they want to know why was this transaction not stopped? What rules affected it? What data did you screen against? Every single little thing that affected that transaction has to be reported. So the solution you have has to be, it should be easy for a bank to be able to pull that information and report back to the regulator. That leads on to artificial intelligence. So. Every CEO in a bank across Europe, across the Americas, has a plan for artificial intelligence. Across the organization, not just in compliance, but across the organization. Uh, everybody accepts it's the future. The, we, when it comes to compliance, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, there's a massive potential gain, but there also is uh, a lot of apprehension, and for good reasons. So the threat to uh, a lot of your organizations are technology companies that claim they do artificial intelligence, not reg techs. So here's being the difference. You may have a technology company that has created a very successful artificial intelligence solution for marketing. So they use artificial intelligence, figure out how, who to advertise to bring you lots of benefit to your organization. Then they say, oh, well, we can use the same technology to reduce false positives in your compliance solution. They are not compliance people. They do, do not get it. And they can, if not implemented properly, it can, uh, can be a danger to you and then you stop, you, you essentially could be processing illegal transactions. Um, an artificial intelligence solution should have a level of explainability as well. So that is going to be the trend. When you get, when you get audited in the future and you have been using an artificial intelligence solution, when the auditor asks you why was this transaction processed, you can't say, well, the engine told me to do it, or artificial intelligence did it, or here's a long bit of code that was used. You need to have a compliance-based artificial intelligence solution um, that made by regtechs.
made by solution providers that know compliance, that know that they have to be able to easily explain why the engine made this decision. Right. There's been um, talk about uh, price validation being a very daunting task early on in the first uh, session pre-lunch. Business had their woes. We've had one session just now where we spoke about uh, price validation again being a bit of a challenge uh, in terms of uh, prevention of trade-based money laundering. From a technological aspect, how, how do you think technology can support and what kind of solutions are available? So, yeah. so th this, is probably, this has been a repeated theme and um, speaking to customers, um, they're all saying the same thing. We need to be able to, uh, some sort of guidance on what, what an average price is. So the one disclaimer I can give, we've kind of all, I've looked at the market, nobody today has a solution, that a good solution that can give you average pricing. So I know it's a problem for the banks at the moment. I'm a vendor and my organization have, at least in a trade compliance, been ahead of the curve. We built a dual use good screening solution before it became a regulation in most countries. Vessel tracking, again, we did it, so we've been ahead. Uh, it's a challenge as far as having a solution for um, average pricing and pricing guidance. Um, I have to hold my hand up and say it's not something we are able to deliver to you today. It's something we're looking at, but it's incredibly challenging. Um, the, you know, people will say, well, customs have, um, you, know, uh, the, uh, you know, globally customs know what the price of a good is when it's being transferred, when it's being shipped. So, you know, you can maybe speak to all of the customs people. How much of that is trade-based? Sorry, how much of that is paper-based? How much of that is electronic? Uh, how much of that is accurate? Because they have the information that a good was shipped for, not what the uh, what the price should be. Um, so we, as an organisation, uh, and I know a number of organisations are looking at this globally. They're trying to find a good way of um, um, they're trying to find a good way of giving some sort of indication, reliable solution. Whether it's web scraping, so you go to a number of websites that sell goods and you're scraping that information, or you're speaking to customs, or you're using a kind of combined approach. So I think in conclusion is, it's a, I know it's a challenge for all of the customers, uh, or the banks, or the financial institutions here. Um, globally, nobody has a solution yet, but everybody's working on it, because everybody knows it's a priority.